What's up guys, um, just bringing you uh, some more tutorials this sort of, I don't know, this month I guess. Uh, and this tutorial is kind of something simple but uh, I think that it's pretty important really. Um, and it's how to make your own sort of alphas for brushes in, uh, in ZBrush. So you're going to need obviously uh, ZBrush and uh, what we're going to do is we click on there. If you, press, uh, if you haven't got that sort of light box window you can press your comma key. To open up this light box here, if you come to uh, this uh, menu tab here called Alpha, uh, we're basically going to make uh, some of these sort of detailing kind of brushes. Um, uh, and I'm going to teach you how to actually get it in here so you can select them easy. You can see my little custom thing here, and I have a couple of alphas that I made. Um, to do that, you're going to need obviously, you're going to do something like Photoshop. Uh, so this is going to be the first method. I'm going to show you two different methods. Uh, the first one is using Photoshop, and the second one is using this program here called Crazy Bump. So um, yeah, if you Photoshop, it's uh, fairly simple, and you you kind of need it to sort of save out the brushes and uh, make them sort of accessible in uh, in ZBrush's uh, Lightbox window here. So um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, really. This is uh, I'm, we're designing these alphas to use as a, a drag rectangle sort of uh, functionality, and I'll show you how that's going to work when we actually make this brush. So uh, I'm just going to search something like uh, all we need is a picture of uh, I don't know, like uh, let's try some tree bark. Uh, I've never tried one of these yet. Let's just see what we get on uh, Google here. Images. Search tools, uh, any size, go large, always go large, um, just to get the uh, the higher resolution. Uh, it's always going to work better. Uh, I'm just trying to look for something interesting, really. Uh, I think that looks pretty rad. So let me just check this out. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's going to have some nice sort of detail and effects. So uh, yeah, let's just copy that image. Uh, come into Photoshop here, and I'm going to make a new file. Uh, I'm just going to make it uh, a thousand pixels by one thousand pixels. Um, you don't necessarily have to stay to the power of two, you know, like you do with texture maps. You know, it doesn't have to be like five twelve by five twelve, or you know, like ten twelve by ten twelve, or whatever. Not ten, uh, ten, ten twenty four by ten twenty four. It can be pretty shy. Keep it square though, just so it's sort of I don't know, a bit easier to manage in terms of making a brush. So. Uh, yeah, in Photoshop, just paste it in, press Control T to access that little um, sort of, you know, little resizing tool. Um, and then I want to crop that by pressing C and just uh, double clicking on there as well, just so it gets rid of the uh, the excess. If I press Control T now, you're gonna notice now that it's actually just the canvas because uh, we sliced out all the uh, the excess of this picture. Um, my left is this image now. Uh, Strip. So I didn't mean to do that. Press Control for that looks a bit. Um, so we left this image, and what we need to do is um, we need to make it black and white. So we can do that by coming up to Image Adjustments, um, either going to Saturation, but I, I usually just come to Gradient Map, and then I just click on this gradient here, press OK, and then it gets like a nice sort of range of black and white. Um, and the next thing we need to do is, like we see, like we see on these brushes, they sort of masked out. Uh, it's like a circle, and it's really soft, sort of edge on the side. Uh, to do that, I'm going to make a new layer by pressing Control N. Uh, just if you want to name it, you can do. But I'm just going to hit OK for this. Uh, and then I'm going to come over here to this gradient bucket here. Right click, and uh, well, it's uh, by default. It'll be. I'm not sure what it is by default, but uh, it's this icon here under your eraser. Uh, make sure gradient tool. Is um <clears throat> is selected and then uh, you want to hit this little circle sort of alpha here. Uh, make sure on this little gradient tab here you have a color and a transparency. Um, so what we can do now is roughly in the center of this image and make sure you're on this new layer and drag out the line so it's sort of almost at the end but not quite. Somewhere around here it's pretty good depending on if you have the center or not. Uh, that looks that's pretty good, um, but it's not quite what we're looking for. It's too sort of you know it's very um, very sort of soft. So what you're gonna do is whilst you have this layer selected, press Control J, and it's gonna start to uh, copy that 
well, duplicate it as you can see here. Press Control J again, and then press Control E to collapse this two together like so. And then you can turn that layer back on. And then to get a selection out of this, we're just going to press Control and click on the uh, little thumbnail of this uh, layer here. And then we have the selection. And what that does is when you press Control and you click, is that it kind of it selects um, pretty much all the visible areas. Uh, and what we want is the non-visible areas in this case, so we can delete uh, the excess of this picture. So to invert that mask, it's a uh, Control Shift I, like so. Uh, and then we want to just hide all that for now. Come down to this picture here and just press Delete, and then it's going to get rid of uh, pretty much everything except what we need. So yeah, that's looking kind of good. And we want to make this background black as well. Uh, so just to select that, then go back to the gradient bucket tool. On this background here, just fill that in, and then we're left with this nice sort of wood kind of alpha, um, and that's looking pretty clean. If you want to sort of make it a bit more stronger on the edges, just duplicate it once. But I'm gonna leave it like this. I think that's it's pretty nice. Uh, not even gonna bother sharpening that image. If your image isn't as sharp as you would like it to be, just uh, you can come to Come to filter here and then play around with uh, this uh, either sharpen or sharpen more. Uh, if you do sharpen more, it's going to kind of make everything insane looking. Depends on how much sharpness the image has anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. And um, it's pretty much ready to save out uh, and in, in import into, into ZBrush. Um, however, you can't just save it out as a PSD like this. What you have to do is, in order for it to um, for ZBrush to recognize it as an alpha map in here and when you click it, double click on these it gets placed into this little alpha box here uh, in, in Photoshop you need to come to image mode and you need to make it a grayscale uh, and then flatten everything as well uh, discard color information yep, and what you're left is uh, with this file like so press Control uh, shift s and we want to save it as a PSD uh, which is at the top and You'd want to navigate to your ZBrush uh, installation folder, which I think might be in the other one. Yep. Uh, Pixelogic, ZBrush R4. Da 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 da. I'm going to go to Z Alphas. I'm going to come to Liam Custom. I'm just going to type in Liam Shaw Demo Tree Bar, just so I know which one it is. I always put something like 001 or whatever, so in case you do a different tree back, you can just put 002. Uh, it's a nice habit to do that on the end of your files, adding the 001. Um, so yeah, save that out. And let's jump in uh, to ZBrush now. And uh, let's just uh, press comma, it should refresh that. And there you go, there's our demo bar. If you double click that, it's going to select that on there. And let's just try it out, see what it does for us on uh, just something. Um, let's just drag out uh, a sphere or something and uh, make that poly mesh. And I'm just going to go to geometry and want to hit uh, dynamesh as well. Uh, and let's just see. Now, the idea of these alpha maps that we have here is that they're not, <coughs> excuse me, they're not designed for like brushing. They're not designed for, you know, going like this and, you know, brushing along. The idea of these is that we can double click them. Assign it to our alpha channel here, and then what we're going to go to on this uh, sort of brush properties here, we want to change it to a uh, drag rectangle. And what that does is it changes the property of the brush to sort of drag out the alpha map that we have selected. So when we now control, not control, when we click and just drag on this uh, sphere, you're going to notice now that it's going to pull out the image that we have here and you're going to res. So you're going to need quite a lot of resolution as well in order to make these look good. Just playing around the intensity of they look really sort of intense. And that's sort of what we get in from that brush so far. Looks a bit noisy. Could be, I don't know, some sort of scarring tissue or something. Uh, but you never know what you're going to get, to be honest, you know. Most of the time, these textures that you get from photographs using the Photoshop method are kind of just noisy, kind of specular detail kind of stuff. So, But the thing is, though, you know, PS PlayStation 4 has been announced now, so this sort of the next generation of games are starting to sort of come into play a little bit and uh, we as you know 3D artists I think we're gonna have the uh, a bit more of a tougher time these days in, in this coming sort of year you know in order to um, you know games are getting more sort of 
I don't know, just the, the hardware is improving so much lately that uh, it can support a lot more denser sort of texture maps and stuff. So, I don't know, it's just a good idea to sort of start to build a library of textures and stuff these days. So, um, yeah, I think the next method I'm going to go into now is using Crazy Bump. So, I'm going to start afresh. Uh, I'm going to control and I'm going to save this image out actually in my pictures, just three by two. And then I'm going to come to Crazy Bump here. Crazy Bump is awesome. It's kind of like a an all-purpose sort of texture uh, tool and I'm just going to open from a photograph file uh, come to pictures um, get my tree back wherever it's gone should be in here somewhere should be called tree back there we are this is from nail and loaded it properly and it's going to take like that it's going to think about it it's going to think about uh, we, what we need to discover here is that uh, these are it's kind of show you a displacement map here uh, and I think we want to go with. Let me just zoom that out a little bit so I can compare. I think we want to go with this one. You can see that uh, this little point here, how it's sort of more embossed in the area and how it should be in real life. You know, that, that sort of surface is higher than sort of this bit here. And it's just trying to figure out, you know, how this displacement is going to work. So I'm going to go with this shape. It doesn't really matter, like, because you can use it in the positive and uh, negative in ZBrush. So. Um, yeah, that looks kind of cool. You can actually get normal maps and stuff out of, the, out of uh, Crazy Bump, but for now, we want to get a, a good displacement map because these work really well in, in ZBrush in terms of uh, identifying detail. But I'm also going to play with the uh, the normal map a little bit. Um, I think that does have some influence on the uh, the dis displacement as well. So I'm going to go on to a box mesh as well, just so I can see. Oh, this is behaving a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna get the sliders kind of, yeah, I don't know, and a nice sort of kind of graph layout. You know, it's kind of cool. Shape recognition. Let's just, play, just basically play around these sliders until this texture on this sort of model here um, kind of represents the image, I guess. Um, let's just go our displacement now. Um, and the idea is that we want to just try and make it look as close as possible to the picture. Um, let's see how this enhanced detail does for us. Okay. That looks kind of cool. You can notice now it's sort of beginning to pick that up a little bit. It's depth. It's going to be the depth. Um, so yeah, it's sort of taking a lot of information from the normal map as well. Um, fine detail. Uh, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out for now. Let's see what this does for us in ZBrush, so we can compare the results. Um, you know, it's just picking up the bigger shapes and uh, the sort of you know the the pieces of these bark and stuff. You know how they're sort of like individual kind of surfaces. The normal map is describing that better to ZBrush than uh, just a black and white images uh, from from Photoshop. So uh, I'm just gonna. I think I can copy yeah, copy to clipboard. So it's gonna copy that for me, and I can just come to uh, our little Photoshop document here, and I can just paste that in like so. Actually, I'm gonna go back a few steps so I can paste that underneath our our um, shape that we had before. And I'm just going to resize that as well to something kind of similar to what we had. Um, you know, I'm just trying to. I think it's going to be around. That's going to. That's, that'll do. And then, same procedure. Control click on that, inverse it, delete it, um, get rid of that top one. And we're left with this. Um, I'm just going to save that out now. Oh, I need to make it a, a, a grayscale as well. Like so. Discard everything. Control save. But I will do it as 002 Liam Custom. Uh, let's go into ZBrush now. And I'm just going to draw out this alpha for the sake of comparison. Uh, I'm do it in the. People keep it as that. <coughs> So uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you're getting from the uh, the original black and white image. So let us check out the um, alpha map version now. So that's zero zero two. 
Okay. So this is the alpha from the displacement map. You can see the detail is more, you know, it's sort of more, I don't know, like, let me just pump, you can really pump up the intensity as well, because they're not as sort of noisy. Um, okay, that looks a bit bad, too much. But you can just notice how the detail from, you know, the displacement map is more sort of 3D, it's more sort of three dimensional than the uh, the pictures with black being black and white. It's more sort of for noisy detail that way. But when you do it as a displacement map, I think ZBrush can understand it a lot better, and you can just get some more interesting results that way. It's like if you do the same intensity, you know, around 19 on this black and white image here, let's just see what we get. Same sort of, you know what I mean? It's just the yeah. It's because there's so many sort of tiny individual pixels on that image is that like you just can't you just can't sort of um, figure them out as well as it can from something like displacement map that's uh, already been sort of made in this external program called you know, crazy bump so uh, but it pretty much this sort of process pretty much works for anything really I mean these are just some sort of examples that I've got here I made using various images and they're just great for giving your models like extra detail that you could never ever you know sculpt by hand um, and I think that's what the industry is kind of getting towards these days especially like I said like I mentioned the PS4 and stuff and you know hardware being a sort of hardware is starting to get really powerful now and uh, they can just handle so much more information than what, than what they used to be able to do so um, you know it's just I don't know it's just starting to get to that sort in that sort of era where we can just be really sort of open with what we do and super detailed kind of stuff um, so yeah that's just a little tutorial on how to make your own sort of detailing kind of alpha brushes for your models I really do like this brush that I made here yeah it just it just looks really cool um, so yeah basically you know have some fun pretty simple process you know you can churn out like 10 brushes in like I don't know like 20 minutes or something um, the detail that you get out of them are just, you know, it's phenomenal, you know. It's really going to sort of set your models apart when you can sort of specifically design a brush for your needs. You're not just relying on what you have in, in Z. Never ever rely on what you're given. You know, always sort of make your own shit what you need them to be. Um, so, yeah, I hope this is interesting. I hope you guys enjoy making your own brushes. Um, <clears throat> if you want to share them, then I think you can actually post your brushes on on the ZBrush official site. I'm not too sure on that. Um, but yeah, how to make brushes.